A new era of dream technology may be upon us. This and more coming up on The Edge. Greetings, my fellow fans of the offbeat and unconventional. I'm Jay Jordan Hawk, and you are watching On The Edge, your one-stop source for all things edgy. I told you before on this show that whenever dreams make the news, it catches my interest. And wow, we have a fascinating story coming to us from Northwestern University. Not exactly my go-to place for edgy news. A group of researchers there, as well as in laboratories in three other countries, France, Germany, and the Netherlands, all decided to experiment with lucid dreaming. Now, if you don't know what lucid dreaming is, hey, that's why I'm here. Lucid dreaming is a mysterious phenomena by which someone who is dreaming actually realizes that they're dreaming. You effectively become conscious within your own dream. And the best part of lucid dreaming is that once you are aware that you are dreaming, you can manipulate the dream itself. It's almost like a Star Trek holodeck, but it's real. I kid, of course. We all know Star Trek is real. Now, lucid dreaming isn't some obscure ability that rare individuals are born with. There are countless books, websites, and video tutorials that will give you techniques for initiating a lucid dream. But from my own experience, the key ingredient is a lot of patience. And it certainly helps to watch the movie Inception right before drifting off to sleep. So, what about lucid dreaming exactly are these researchers researching? Well, they postulate that since a lucid dreamer is experiencing conscious awareness, it might actually be possible to communicate with them while the person is still dreaming. The main problem to overcome in such an experiment is that even if you could communicate with the dreamer and they understood you, how would you know you reached them? If you wait until they awaken to ask them, they might have already forgotten the dream, especially if the dream was of low lucidity. You can't exactly ask them to wave their arms if they understand you, because the body protects sleepers by paralyzing the body through a process known as sleep atonia, so that a dreamer doesn't act out dream actions in real life. Suppose you're running in your dream, for example. If your body mimicked that in real life, you could run into rush hour traffic. So, paralysis can indeed be a good thing. It just sucks if you're a researcher who happens to study lucid dreamers. But these clever dream researchers decided on having the dreamer move their eyes, since eye movement is unaffected by sleep paralysis, as any REM fan should know. Well, the results were nothing short of astounding. In the dream state, researchers asked the dreamers questions like, do you hear me? If so, move your eyes three times really fast. The dreamer did just that. And they also remembered doing that upon awakening, thus confirming that it wasn't a coincidence. It gets better. The researchers asked a dreamer to answer rudimentary math questions such as, what is eight minus six? The dreamer could then move their eyelids the correct number of times to give the answer. Dreamers reported that the outside voice of the researcher was interpreted by their subconscious minds in different ways, but in most cases, the dreamer could tell that the researcher's voice was external to their own consciousness. One lucid dreamer reported that they thought the voice was that of God asking them a question, so of course they dutifully answered. The dreamer said, quote, In my dream, I was at a party and I heard you asking questions. I heard your voice as if you were a God, unquote. Another dreamer reported, quote, Your voice was coming from the outside, just like a narrator of a movie, unquote. People, we are indeed entering a new era in consciousness studies. Psychology Today had what seemed like a rather edgy article just a few weeks prior to this lucid dreaming news entitled, A New Tool to Assess Possible Dream-Related Psi Phenomena. In the article, the author postulates that with advancements in fMRI technology and the ability of AI to map the mind of a dreamer and thus know the contents of the dream, the day may soon be upon us when this technology could be used to divine the future. Quote, it is possible to use AI machine learning tools to learn how to accurately classify what given brain activity patterns are mediating or depicting. We therefore can look at brain activity patterns of a person who is dreaming and in theory, accurately identify what that person is dreaming about. Heck, that seemed edgy a few weeks ago, but now we can simply talk directly to lucid dreamers and ask them for some stock tips. 
But one good thing about that Psychology Today article that may prove useful is that they cite a provocative 2017 article from the International Journal of Dream Research entitled, On the Correspondence Between Dream Content and Target Material Under Laboratory Conditions, a Meta-Analysis of Dream ESP Studies. Catchy title. That article demonstrated the validity of precognition in dreams and urged researchers to examine the phenomenon. They write, our review has shown that dream ESP remains a promising, if somewhat neglected, area of parapsychological research. We would now say that dream ESP is a demonstrable effect. That article was received with crickets from the scientific community. They are too busy asking dreamers, what is 8 minus 2? The lucid dream researchers propose some more mundane uses for their lucid dream communication, like therapy. Ugh. That's fine, I guess. I mean, these are respectable scientists. They can't do something edgy, like communicate with lucid dreamers, without following it up with something really boring. Otherwise, other scientists wouldn't pay attention to them. But, being an author and not a scientist, I have less restrictions and can devise many edgy things I'd do if I could contact a dreamer. I'd ask them to conjure up a higher intelligence and ask what's the meaning of life. I wonder how many times they would have to move their eyes to give me an answer to that question, though. Maybe 42. If you get that reference, welcome to my channel, fellow Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy fans. Or instead of asking someone a rudimentary math problem like 8 minus 2, perhaps ask a really difficult calculus question. This would be especially interesting to see if the dreamer didn't know math very well. Can a dreamer call upon knowledge and skills he or she doesn't even know they have? Even edgier, see if the dreamer could communicate with a deceased loved one, or otherwise bring back verifiable evidence of the afterlife. Perhaps you could ask them to try and communicate with other lucid dreamers on the other side of the world, or in orbit around the Earth. Perhaps this could be a practical way to instantly communicate with colonies on Mars in the future. Why stop there? Perhaps we could use dreamers to search for aliens to communicate with. Aliens who are wondering what took Earth so long to advance our dream technology. Why don't we ask dreamers to locate Atlantis? I mean, if we can see the future, why not the past? Now, when you go away to college, you can major in subjects like Psi Archaeology or something equivalent. Perhaps Northwestern could offer that major. Oh, heck, I'll be happy if they simply offer a course called Rudimentary Lucid Math 101, called an elective. Hey, perhaps you're more into CSI rather than PSI. Maybe this could be used to solve crimes before they happen. How many of you have seen the movie Minority Report? That movie involved psychics who identified criminals before they actually committed crimes and were thus arrested before they committed them. It turns out it might be real very soon. Perhaps this technology could be used to locate the next Osama bin Laden type figure, minus the cost of two wars and lots of dead people. I hope the CIA is building up its arsenal of lucid dreamers because you better believe the Soviets are doing it. Sorry, you can tell I'm a Cold War kid. Obviously, the technique still needs to be refined to make communication easier and more fluent, as the researchers themselves admit, but seems to me that's just a matter of time and not a limitation of the phenomena. So, what do you all think about this? Ever had a lucid dream? If you were a researcher, what would you ask a dreamer? What applications of this technology can you think of? Leave your thoughts below. Just be sure to keep them civil and keep them edgy. And that's our show for today. I'm Jay Jordan Hawk. See you next time. On the edge. If you like edgy content, check out my award-winning young adult novels, Puka is the Outcast, A Scout is Brave, and Unwatchigi the Dreamer.